Hi, hey, welcome to the channel. I'm Rochelle Emerson. Thank you for joining me. Uh, gonna do part two. Eileen Warnos, America's first female serial killer. This is the prosecution on redirect in the defense's case that the, the prosecution had rested. And I haven't seen this. It's two hours long. But I'm anticipating some serious spark flying. Happy Halloween to everybody. It's that time of year. This is, it's been about 25 years. It was in October 2002. She was executed. So this is kind of like the anniversary. And I think this is what's gearing me to want to cover this and go over it. Plus, I was fascinated that I'd never had watched it before, the trial. I've only seen the documentaries, but I just never had time before in the past. I mean, that's a lot of footage to go through. But anyway, um, let's get right into this. We got a lot of ground to cover. Okay, here's the prosecution. And he is ready to strike, it looks like. Let's get right into it. Ms. Warren, if you were in the courtroom yesterday when the uh, videotape of your statement about Richard Mallory was played, wasn't it? Weren't you? Yes, sir. You saw it in its entirety, didn't you? Yes. You didn't make one mention of penal rape or being tied up or having alcohol supported in your condition during that day. I told you that he was getting violent, and also I told you before in the first confession that he was talking about anal screwing. Did you, in fact, in, did you see anywhere in the videotape, or did you tell Detective Porzeppa at any time that you were strangled with cord by Mr. Mountain? Well, every time I tried to start telling you or him about what was happening, he interrupted me and asked me how, time, how many times was this person shot, um, what kind of items did you take, did he say anything after he was, when you shot him, where did you leave his car? I never got a chance to ever s express myself. Well, I was I, always interrupted. So you say that the reason you didn't say it then is because you interrupted. Pardon? You just were cut off. You didn't have a chance to tell. Exactly. Before Detective Portello began the interview, with, he said he wanted to tell him all the facts and circumstances surrounding the Mallory killing, didn't he? I don't even you. recall him saying that. You don't recall him saying that? No. Well, what did you think your purpose was when you were sitting there telling him about the Mallory case? My main purpose was there to confess about Tyra's innocence, and that was all. I didn't have any, I, I couldn't. There was no way that I could have even remember. I was hysterical, under a shock, and they had forced me to talk, saying that they're going to arrest Tyra Moore if I don't ask answer their questions on the case, which I didn't want. To, I was only there to confess about Tyra's innocence because I just got done talking to her on the phone and told her I was going to confess to clear her. I didn't know I was going to have to talk about anything because. Of that, if I did, believe me, I couldn't remember nothing because I was totally out of it. Oh. Well, it wasn't because the detective cut you off then. Now you're saying it's because you're totally out of it. Which was Because they cut me off and because I couldn't remember. Oh, it's because you couldn't remember. I couldn't remember apartment. at all. A lot of things I couldn't remember. I mean, I wouldn't be able to get completely like I just said today. I mean, you could remember being aimly raped if you've been aimly raped, couldn't you? I was I I wasn't even interested in telling them certain things because right. I was interested in Tyra Moore and I was mad that they have threatened me that if I don't talk to them they were gonna arrest Tyra Moore. So I was pretty well belligerent and stubborn as well as just saying, well, I'm just here to confess about Tyra. I'm not here to confess 
about the murders because I just trying to declare to you that there's not two women, there's one woman. All right, now, as I understand it, you didn't tell about she the anal rape the and the alcohol. Let me finish. You mm -hmm. didn't understand about the anal rape and the alcohol. You didn't talk about that and the tying up because the detective cut you off. That's right. Or you didn't tell them because you forgot about it. Or you didn't tell them because there's you didn't. There's no or. Well, that's two of the reasons. It's all together. The third reason you gave was now because you were just there to talk about Ty Moore and you were stubborn. There was a lot of reasons. Well, how about the rest The of reasons it? are, I'm there to confess that Ty Moore is innocent, which was a, she knows pretty much, which was a flat out lie because I loved her so much I was protecting her. Well, are you lying to protect her today? Oh, I'll be more than happy to explain that Tyra Moore knows more than she's saying and that she knows it's self-defense. Are you lying to protect her today? No, I'm not. I will tell you all about Tyra oh. Moore. Oh. All right, she said, you sure we have the reasons correct? She said, you didn't tell the detective because he cut you off and you didn't have a chance. And or, you didn't tell the detective because you couldn't remember it. And or, you didn't tell the detective because you're stubborn and you're protecting. I couldn't remember. You finished the question, Ms. Oh. Morris. And you didn't tell the detective because you were <laughs> stubborn and trying to protect Tyra Moore. Any other reasons you didn't tell the detective? I couldn't remember because I was in a state of shock of Tyra. Thinking about Tyra, I told you over and over and over and over again. God, I'm only here to confess for Tyra. I'm only here to confess for Tyra. And... I was totally focused on Tyra. When they asked me a question, when I started to get in the nitty gritty to explain what happened, they always cut me off and asked me then other questions like how, much, how many times was he shot? What kind of items did you take? And, that, and when I was starting to get where my memory was going okay, even if I tried, but then I wasn't really into the mood to talk about the cases, so that's why I couldn't remember because I was thinking about Tyra, and I was mad that they had forced me into talking about the cases when I only want to talk to them about Tyra Jolene Moore. Right. You say they forced you to talk about the cases? Yes, they did. All right. Let me ask you this. On the tape, and according to Detective Force episode testimony, he advised you fully of your rights before you made any statements at all. Yeah, so yeah. and I, I walked in there. And he talked to me 15 minutes before the tape was put on and the video was put on. And you it was not on at all. Nothing was. He's, he had to turn the tape on. He had to go and turn the video on. Nothing was on when I talked to him. And that is when they threatened me. They threatened you? Yes, they did. Now, let me ask you this. You were fully advised of your eyes and you didn't have to make any statement at all, did you? When I walked in there, they said, I told them I'm here to confess, but I want to just really tell you about Tyra. And I was telling them I'm just here to talk about Tyra. He said, well, that's not going to do any good because if you're just here to talk about Tyra and not about the case, I've got, I've got Jolene Moore in custody right now, and I will have her here in the Volusia County Branch Jail, and I will have her indicted for first-degree murder as well as you. And we believe you are the suspects in this case. She was a suspect, wasn't she? Yes, and I was pretty amazed that she became uh, under protective custody when the police officers arrived in P Pennsylvania. That she's under protective custody suddenly when she's a suspect. And in fact, she's a suspect because you brought the automobiles of men you killed uh, to your dwelling and had her either ride in or drive in, didn't you? She drove it. Drove, drove several of them, didn't she? Objection, no, she Your Honor. Didn't. Objection, Your Honor. Okay. Lee, we advise you on the record, do not talk about other cases. They have not been tried. Other juries will hear those. This is about Mallory. If you're, excuse me, Your Honor, please, uh, I would object to counsel telling his witness not to answer questions. I have to say the objection. In fact, she was a suspect because you and she were riding in an automobile that was wrecked that you had stolen from a man you killed, correct? Objection. I'm not going to answer the objection. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, may we have a brief recess to, uh, I'll, I'll get back to that. May I reserve that area? For... I mean, the jury done heard that. That there's other victims? It certainly implied it. Wow. Now, you indicated that 
It was because of a telephone, series of telephone calls with Tyra Moore that you uh, decided to confess. Outside the scope, you're on out of debt. Is that right? Uh, say that over again? Yes. You indicated that because you've been on the telephone to Tyra Moore, you decided to confess. Hector. Yes. In fact, you talked to her on the phone over a three day period on 11 different uh, calls, did you not? Yes. And isn't calls it? That, I'm sorry. I was going to say calls that the police officer, the police officer exposed <laughs> Tyra to uh, call me to confess. Sure. You call her each time. The police officers wrote that note, had her write a note, and told them, have her call me. They had it all planned. But you called her each time, right? I called her under the direction of the police directing Tyra Jones anymore. The police had her set up so they could record your telephone calls, didn't it? Yeah, they had me set up so that I talked to her mm -hmm, about, and her trying to asked me to clear her when Tyra Moore knows more than she's even talking about. I only cleared her because I loved her. All right, what is it that Tyra Moore knows that she's not talking about? What is it that Tyra Moore knows that she's not talking about? Objection to the part of the question, Your Honor. No she believes, it, 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 she knows that it's self-defense and she is not telling anybody anything. What else? It's basically about it. She knows it's self-defense and she's not saying anything because she's involved in this books and movies and she's involved in uh, 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 her family, not losing her family. I know her very well. She doesn't want to lose her family and she's willing to lie for that in order to, and she's also worried about being uh, uh, arrested for accessory to the fact, right. after the fact. If it was self-defense, and you really killed Mr. Mallory in self-defense, how would that jeopardize Tyra Moore? Objection to the form of the question, Your Honor. Rule. Because Tyra Moore is interested in making her $500 million and more she's already been offered and it's on a cap waiting for her if I get a conviction. Well, no, that's, you didn't answer the question. I asked you if, in fact, it was self-defense and you killed Mr. Mallory because of the things you described, how would that jeopardize, Tyra. let me finish, mm -hmm. how would that jeopardize Tyra Moore? Because I have to, they have to have my, these people that it's are buffering. involved in books and movies have to have my blood in order to get the money. So they're willing to lie. Are, are, you, are, you, are you saying it would, I'm asking about jeopardizing Tyra Moore. You said it would jeopardize Tyra Moore if you told a self-defense story. How would that jeopardize her? That was your word. No, I'm talking about. <laughs> She doesn't want to say it's self-defense because I believe she is involved with a lot, millions of dollars, books and movies, and she doesn't want my acquittal because if I get convicted, she gets multi-million. So does Mr. Horse and Power, whatever his name is, Munster, and a lot of you other detectives and police officers that are involved in this, and also that her family is really uh, she's concerned about her family. She loves her family to the max. Her family's rejecting her. That's tearing her up because I know her to the max. And plus, she is um, she's claiming she doesn't know anything because she's afraid of accessory to the fact of because of knowing any incident whatsoever. So she's claiming she's pretending she doesn't know anything. Not even. That I told her it's self-defense or an incident that happened. No, my goodness, she she's even acting like she doesn't even know how long we were in the Soviet bar the first night we met. She's acting like she doesn't even know where I lived. She knew where I lived. I was living in the car at the time because I just broke up with Tony. She's acting like uh, she doesn't even know uh, some of the apartments we lived in and stuff. I mean, I got 289 lives in her deposition that she gave of just flat out lies of just common things. Why is she lying so much? Why does she have to lie about a simple thing? And you said it's because it would jeopardize her in some way that she didn't tell about herself defense. I believe that she is lying about a whole lot of things to keep herself from being any accessory to the fact of anything. Okay. She is afraid to tell anything, even if she's even afraid to say self-defense because then she is knowledgeable about the situation. Is there anything else 
that she knew except for the self-defense story? Has to answer your own rule. What was I? Yeah. Is there anything else that you say she knew that would incriminate her except the self-defense story about now? She just knows it's self-defense and she just she just knows a little bit of what happened, not all, because she'd always tell me, don't tell me the rest of I want to pass a polygraph. If I ever get polygraphed, I'll pass it. Is that it? Mm -hmm. You can tell her anything else. I wouldn't get in, I couldn't tell her in detail because I didn't want her to get too involved, but she didn't hear from me. It was self-defense and just a little bit and saw the bruises, witnessed the bruises and all, asked me, asked me a little bit about the, this situation, which I'm not, I know. Now, when you gave your statement to Detective Parzet, uh, you told him that she didn't know anything, didn't you? I was covering for her totally. My question is, didn't you tell him she didn't know anything about it? I was covering for her totally. You lied to him, didn't you? Yeah. And you also told him that you kind of got to drinking and then you just casually mentioned that you've been drinking and you've been in the woods with your bicycle and you saw a body in the woods and that's what you told her and that's what you told her. that happened 14 days after that happened 14 days after if, this if your honor please may the witness be instructed to first answer yes or no yes your honor I, I would object to the, her giving a narrative to every question any of these call for a yes or no and then she can explain after she gives her answer all right in in fact did you tell the detectives, and it's on the videotape, that Objection it, to the statement, it's on the videotape. Didn't you tell the detectives during the tape statement that you told her, after you got to drinking, that you just found a man in the woods body, right? Yes. Okay. And, and you told him that she made some remark to the extent you're shitting me, right? Yes. And she didn't believe you, did she? It, it happened 14 days later on the news. She saw it, and I knew she was going to see the car because we. she saw the car the first day. It was on the news, the vehicle with the gator tag in the front. I knew she was going to recognize it, so I told her that 14 days after. So... I told her that 14 days after, oh, so I told her about the bicycle jazz 14 days after, so she could prepare, because I was going to prepare her to tell her what happened. Because you knew that would come, you saw that on the television, you knew she was going to pick it up. Yes, I did. And so, uh, then you told her that uh, there was this dead guy in the woods that you can't crawl, right? Mm -hmm. Ask and answer your own objection. Right. Yes, I told him. But you didn't tell her you killed him, did you? Yes, I did. Oh, when did you tell her that? The fourteenth day after he was on TV. But first, you just said you found the body, and then you drank a little more, and you said you killed him, right? What? You began the story when you were drinking that night when it came out on television. First, you said you found the body. And then you told him, you told her you killed him. Objection to story. First she said, I found the body, and then I told him I killed him. Yeah. Oh. Yes, because I wanted to prepare, I wanted to prepare her, like, what, how she would react. Yeah, and she, was she started getting reacting. And she, she got right upset, didn't she? At first she didn't believe me. Did there ever come a time she believed you? Yes, after I started telling her, this guy attacked me. I'm trying to tell you. I wanted to prepare you because I've got to tell you. That day that you saw those bruises on my neck and everything, the day we moved with that car, that was Richard Mallory, and he had raped me <coughs> really bad. So, so you didn't even tell her this rape story until two weeks after? <laughs> I was scared too because I didn't want her to worry get scared she loved me really bad and I loved her very bad and I didn't want to just sit there and tell her what happened
She's and then you say that you told her all these details about the alcohol and the anal rape and the tying up and all that? No, I didn't tell her all the details. I told her I was raped. She asked. I told her I was raped, and she asked a few questions, and I told her, I started to get into detail. She said, don't tell me no more. Don't tell me no more. I don't want to know no more. She was really pissed off. She was really mad at Mallory for what he'd done, and she was just really mad. How close were you in time? Very close. Tight is a knot. Two peas in a pod. We were right arm, left arm, glued together. I mean, we were tight. We loved each other very much. Trusted each other. Yeah. What broke you up? Pardon? What broke you up? What broke up the relationship? When we saw the sketch on the TV, I told her, you're going to have to go to your parents' house. You're going to have to just leave me. And we made arrangements for her to take a bus. She called her parents and got ready to go up north. The sketch on the TV, you talk to Jackson, Your Honor. The sketch of the two girls. Sketches that are in evidence here in this case? Yes. Why why did that cause you to break up? Because too many people knew that Tyra wore a baseball cap, I wore a baseball cap, and that we were always together. And, a, and the looks of that sketch fit our features. And so now he's a suspect in a murder. Yes. Because you and she have been riding in a murdered man's car. Objection, Your Honor. We don't answer that question. I'm not going. I'm advice of my attorneys. I'm not going to answer that question. Are you not going to answer any questions about the other six murders? That's I will right. state that Ms. Ms. Wernus's attorney and so will Mr. Miller and Ms. Jenkins that on our advice, she will not answer those questions on our advice because those cases have not been tried. Other juries will I can't believe they let him say that, the prosecution. Wow, that just blows me away. Excuse me. During the three days of telephone calls while you were in the jail and you were talking to Tyra Moore, you called her each time, correct? I had to. She couldn't call me. And to your knowledge, those telephone conversations were all reported by the police. I asked her over and over, if she, is she being recorded? Well, you suspected you were being recorded, did you? No, but I thought I asked her to see if she'd tell me she was or something, because I know Tyra. She might say yes and tell me the truth, but now I've realized that Tyra sure can conceal herself and lie. I never knew she had a black heart like she does. That's right. Right now, she could help me out if she'd just be honest. What is it you would want her to say about these murders? What? Objection, Your Honor. Lee, do not answer the quote. Mm -hmm. Take away the yes, Your Honor, and throw your bus. During those uh, telephone conversations, you did not even one single time in three days to 11 calls say you've been raped, did you? I was totally concentrating on her and what she's doing up north. And then when she told me that the police are around, I was totally concentrating on how I've got to cover for her. Never even thought about that. What were you covering for her? What you were trying to cover for her? That she, to be a suspect. She hadn't done anything, had she? Accessory. Your Honor, has an answer. She's accessory. She knows what happened. Just in knowing? Each... She didn't participate in any way? No, she Objection, didn't. Your Honor, I asked an answer. She knows. 
that I was raped. Oh. Not in detail, but she knows I was raped and I defended myself. And she and you say she knows that because you told her 14 days after it happened. Right? And yes. <clears throat> okay. But you didn't mention it one time during the three days of a phone calls, did you? Objection and fast answer. Like I said, I wasn't concentrating on any of the self-defense or anything. I was concentrating on when I get in there and confess that she's not involved in a murder. That just solely I am the person that's involved. She is not. I've got to clear her that she, they got the wrong person they're looking for. Does that mean that during those three days phone calls, you did not even one time mention a rape? We didn't even hardly talk about it. We talked about other things. Does that mean that you Her never... family and stuff. Does that mean that you never mentioned the rape during the three days of phone calls? That's right. Okay. It was never brought up. In fact, it was never brought up until months after you were arrested, correct? It wasn't brought up with Detective Ford's name, it wasn't. Uh, it sure wasn't, because he didn't give me a chance to say it. You know, he always cut me off. Or you and forgot. every one of those or, or crimes, forgot. he cut me off. Answer. Answer he cut me off. He cut me off every time I talked about a rape with any incident. Oh, did you talk about rapes with other incidents? Objection. I'm Ron. not going to answer. Object, Lee, do not answer I'm about not. cases. They have not been tried yet. Ron, no, let's just put the Excuse me. Yeah, I have that. Yeah. 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 Well, can we have that? Thanks, Ron. No, sir. I'm going to get on them, too. There's no kidding. 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 And, and, and if your honor to allow her to answer part of the question and then not allow me to finish the question, tie my hands behind my back. That's all right. Mr. Jacob, do you have an objection? Yes, I do, your honor. In fact, during the three days phone calls, more than 65 times you said it was either mistaken identity or in the end that Ty was innocent, correct? Over and over again. Because in the later portions of the phone, when I kept asking her about if anybody's recorded, I felt just in case she is lying to me, I'm going to not express anything on that phone that would put her in jeopardy. Or put you in jeopardy. Right. right. Mm -hmm. You're also looking to protect yourself, aren't you? Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's why over over 25 times you said the mistaken identity. You said that over and over again, didn't you? No, I only said it twice. Only said it was mistaken identity twice? I think. I haven't, I don't remember the phone calls. Everything that we said. Could have been more than I mean, 25. I can't remember every word that was said. Could have been more than 25. More than 25? Yes. Like I, if you counted them, I don't know. I don't think so, as far as I'm concerned. How about more than 20? No. More than 10? I don't know. I saw. I thought a couple times I said it. Okay. All right, and more than 25 times on the telephone, you suggested that she lied for you, didn't you? No, I don't recall any, any part. I told her... Told her to please go and tell him the truth, which I thought she would go and tell him self defense. Oh, but didn't you say, don't mention me? Tell him the truth, but don't mention me. Didn't you say that over and over again? I don't recall that. I don't know. You don't recall asking or suggesting that she lied? If I did, then I said next that I don't know, it's a very confusing situation. It's a very intense, scary, shocking moment. A lot of things are mixed and mashed. You just don't think properly. You don't think. What was shocking about casual phone calls on, on the telephone 
Your best what do you friend. mean casual? They started getting where she's talking about her family is being interrogated by police officers. Now, you, you talk about drinking beer and how you couldn't wait to get out and things like that, too, didn't you? Yes, but I couldn't tell you what day, when, where, first, second, third time. I told her how much you loved her and missed her, things yes. like that. Mm -hmm. These weren't shocking phone calls, were That was the beginning. That was the beginning. We were talking about how much I loved her and stuff. Yes, I missed her. That was the beginning. The shocking phone calls come at the end. And, and if you, susp you suspected the police were lifting there towards the end, didn't you? I didn't know. I had no. I, I didn't know if I could believe or not. So I tried to keep calm on the phone on certain things. Well, wouldn't this have been an ideal time under this calm circumstance to say, "Well, you know, I had I to don't, do it." Let me finish the question. You know, I had to do it because I was raped so brutally and had to defend myself. Wouldn't that have been something to say for the police to hear? I didn't want her to be accessory to the fact. I constantly thought accessory to the fact. That she could be charged because she knew about an incident that even lingered for a year before anything was known about it. That's the first thing uh, you, you told the police, wasn't it? That she knew about the killing, but she didn't really believe you? Because at first she didn't believe me. In other words, the first, almost the first thing out of your mouth, that she's innocent. Oh, yes, I'm lying there, though. I'm telling him, <laughs> and she didn't believe me, but I am lying. I'm covering for her because I don't want her. I'm doing the same thing she's doing, pretending that she knows nothing. Maybe she didn't. knows it's self-defense. She knows Maybe. I was right. Maybe you're doing the same thing then that you are now, would you say? I'm not lying at all. I'm up here telling truth, and I think I'm the only one that's telling the truth between my lawyers and me. Especially when I've when I've learned about all this book and movie uh, read. Talk about that. You were uh, you were caught to some movie people about this, haven't you? I did. Talk oh, uh, Jackie Drew. We have a lawsuit going on on her. We are filing a lawsuit. Movie, Major. movie producer type person. Can you talk about uh, if any money was to be made out of this, you'd like uh, Lee to have it, didn't you? Lee? I'm sorry. I to have it, didn't you? No, because if I wrote, I if I said anything to her in a letter, which I can't understand how I could have wrote her while I was in jail, because uh, as soon as I got done talking to the detectives, they stuck me in solitary confinement lockdown, shoving pills down me and got me messed up on drugs, forcingly. And I didn't have any pen or pencil or paper to write. And you people are saying that those letters came in January in jail, and I don't remember writing any letters whatsoever. Who, who was this who was forcing drugs down you? Like they had me on visceral. They had me... They had me where I didn't have any, any, I didn't have any commissary, any, bi not even a Bible, a book, nothing to read, 24-7 in a square little room with nothing to do but come up and say, do you want your pills so they help you go to sleep? And of course, I took them to sleep and I got hooked on Vistaril. I was taking 2,800 milligrams a week, 16 pills a day, this 400 milligrams a day, 16 pills a day, almost killed me. They almost killed me. You said detect when the detectives say anything do they want it? It was a detective's idea. How because you, how do you know that? I sure didn't ask for it. Well, I didn't ask to be put in medical lockup. You're as soon as I got done with the cops, they shuffled me over there and did that to me. You're saying that the detective or SAPA is forcing you to take pills? It was a plan, I believe. This was after you made your tape statement, right? Right? Yes. Okay. You, weren't, like on I pills. you weren't on pills when you made your tape statement, were you? No, but I was coming off of alcohol. And I was really still shaking and pretty well withdrawing from alcohol. Did Heavy you, drinking. Did you see the video tape of yourself? No, yesterday? I haven't seen, I've only seen that. So it's all that part, mm -hmm. the short part. Mm -hmm. I've never seen the whole video. Did you see any evidence of yourself shaking? Weren't you lighting cigarettes and smoking and being casual? 
If you guys think I was, I wasn't. I was very, very nervous and just trying to keep it together as much as I could. But I was shaking everything. And that's why he gave me his jacket, because I was just shaking like a leaf and it was cold in there, which made it worse. Well, how many times uh, during these uh, 11 phone calls in three days did you even say that you were a victim and tried to rob you? Or that anyone had tried to rob you? Your Honor, objection has been answered several times. Now, what did, was that question again? Yeah. You never once even said that your victim tried to rob you. Objection, Your Honor, the charge your victim. You never once said that Mr. Mallory tried to rob you on the telephone, did you? Why should I? We weren't talking about Mallory. We weren't talking about any incidences. All we were talking about, I mean, all I was thinking about, I mean, was to clear Ty from being that suspect of the sketches on that TV. What what were you thinking about when you were talking about his mistaken identity? The sketches. In case the tape was rolling, if there were some police officers there, I was protecting her over the phone. And you, you even said that you were going to sue law enforcement if you got arrested for this, didn't you? Or sue the county. Who knows? I was withdrawing from alcohol so bad, I was so confused and so scared about Tyra that I, I couldn't function properly. I don't know what I was saying. I was I don't know. I was totally in another, I was in Pluto, scared out of my wits, caring about Tyra, loved her to the max. I must have told her 25 times a day, I love you. You said that, uh, <coughs> that you were supporting Tyra or she really wasn't working. Is that what you've been telling the jury? I, I've supported her for... Well, three and a half years, the last year she worked. But she made such little money, I had to still work. Didn't you continue to tell detectives that she worked all the time? No, she, she didn't worked. work. I meant she worked all the time at Casa Del Mar. To directly talking about Casa Del Mar when I say that. Didn't you also say all she does is go to work and come home and then go back and go to work? That's and Casa do Del Mar. That's do Casa Del Mar. And when you, when you spoke to De Detective Porzapa and told him what you had told Ty, what you told him was that you told him you found a body, but you're just bullshitting her, in your words, because you were real drunk. Remember saying that? I, what I meant was I was saying that there's a lot of times I'd be drunk and I would just bullshit with her. Oh, but I was, that when I was lying mm -hmm, about her, yeah. Trying to make her sound like she didn't know anything. Yeah, okay, I got you. I remember what you, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember all the, what those confessions say either. So. Our key story straight in. Objection, Your Honor, Badrin. Hard to keep the stories straight, isn't it? No. It's hard to remember what you're talking about. Because I'll tell you right, when you just asked me that question, I don't know what you were talking about as far as uh, what it was about. Like, was I talking on the phone? Was I? I didn't know you were reading out of the confession. Now, the reason you were a prostitute is because... You made really good money at it, right? Yes. In fact, the uh, indication was that you went out and sold yourself six or seven days each week. Um, I went out anywhere from four to seven. It, deep, it varied. There's times I only went out three days a week. But it varied, but basically I went out four to seven. I mean, because there's very few times I went out three times a week, 
Mostly I went out four to seven times a week. Yes. And you had sex with three to eight guys each time. Yeah, because it varies. You don't, never know how many you're going to have. You just keep hustling till the day's through. Damn. Damn. And you were charging how much uh, for sex act? 30 for head, 35 straight, 40 for half and half, 100 an hour. You make anywhere between $600 to $1,000 a week. Well, you're right. And that's where all the money went in bars with Tyra. You're Fancy capable. clothes and beer drinking. You're capable of holding other jobs, aren't you? You've done good work. I don't have the qualifications for the jobs. I've always been fired, and I've never been able to hold a job. I don't. The only thing I know how to do is prostitution well. It's the only thing I know how to do. We get paid more doing that than anything else you've ever done, don't you? It's good money. It's also the only thing I really know how to do. We well, also like it. all my life. You also like it, don't you? You like it. Well, I like the sex, and I like some of the clients I meet become like my brothers. But it's a job. That's just part of being a prostitute. Right, but it's just kind of a rolling road party, wasn't it? Your Honor, Jack, how often say it's also a dressing character? No, because you have to watch yourself and be careful, and you've got to, you know, keep a level head on your shoulders. It's, it's a job. It's not exciting, like super exciting. You have to keep a good head on your shoulders and just do your job and hope you don't, you know, run into jerks and stuff. Do you like the sex and you like the money? Yes, I, I like the sex and I like the money. Yeah. And you like the contact with the different men? Mm-hmm. And then there came a time that you decided to arm yourself, start carrying a, a pistol, correct? Yes. And you said there was a reason for that. that uh, tell us again, if you would, the reason you felt plainly necessary to carry such a I'm sorry. I carried it plainly for protection. You said that over a period of time, men had, men had tried to rape you or rape you? I've been raped many a times. And it never worked when I had weapons of other weapons. I never could defend myself. I finally got a gun where it would be defense. Well, how many times during the four and a half years you lived with uh, time more did you have to defend yourself? I was raped three times, but and there was two other incidents where I had the gun, but I didn't use it. They just had their their fun. They were young guys. I didn't need to hurt them because they didn't use any weapons on me or anything. The other three, I had two gas guns and a bullfighter, and I got raped and beat up royal on those. So you say there are five times you had to defend yourself. Uh, uh, with weapons while you were being raped, but mm -hmm. didn't have to use a gun. Yeah, and the two guys that were one looked like about 22 and the other 27, that's when I had the gun just before Mallory. But any time that you, that you did use a gun to defend yourself from rape? Objection, Your Honor, saying objection, don't answer the question. In the scope of the cross, Your Honor. I think you can answer that question. He asked before. Right. Oh. Uh, Steve, what? Well, the question, and I'll, I'll maybe <clears throat> try to make sure that I'm clear. How many times during the four and a half years you were living with time or did you have to use a gun on someone to defend yourself? Objection, same grounds. Yes, before my we have an objection. Please okay. don't answer the question. Can you phrase your question? How many times? Before you killed Mr. Mallory, while living with Tyre Moore, did you have to shoot someone to defend yourself from rape? 
I couldn't. I didn't have a, be um, a vehicle. I didn't have a pistol, a weapon. But if you had, you'd have used it earlier. I tried with the mace net, and I've got beat up and raped. It didn't work. If you had a gun those other times, you shot them in? Asked and answered. Yeah. Answered that. Yes, you so well, in the advice of my attorneys, I'm not going to answer that question. No, she hasn't interrupted you not to answer that. Would you have shot men before that and you had a gun earlier? Well, I'll just answer it like this. Every situation is totally different. I couldn't answer that question. All right. Well, how about just the five men you said that raped you before Maori? Would you have shot them? I don't know. I can't. I don't know. It's every incident is totally different. Well, I guess the question it's is, very physical. If it's very violent and physical, I'm going to defend myself. Yes, everybody has a right to defend themselves. That's what I did. These were violent, violent rapes, and the other ones I had to beg for. I had to beg for my life. I had a double barrel shotgun against my head. It had 357 Magnum against my head. This when is brutal. Right. In the rapes. Wasn't in any of these other. The rape. Wasn't in any of the men you killed. Objection, Your Honor. That's a question. <laughs> The prosecution is just pounding her. Damn. She should have never took the stand. Did you ever kill anyone that had threatened you with a 357 Magnum or a sawed-off or a shotgun to your head? I couldn't. I didn't objection, have... Your Honor. As long as he focuses it on the four matter, I have no objection. He doesn't lay down and answer the question. Okay. the question. Did you ever kill anyone to threaten you with 357 Magnum? I Same did. objection, Your Honor. Did, did you ever kill anyone before you killed Mr. Mountain to threaten you with 357 Magnum? No. I didn't have a gun. To, um, he's wanting her to say she killed other people. That's what he's driving at. <laughs> I mean, he's very cunning prosecutor. I think he. I think that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to get her to talk about the, uh, bring up the other uh, murders. And I didn't bullfighter in the gas gun. I always, they always got from me and put the weapons on me, ma making me beg for my life. Did Did anyone after? You killed Mr. Mallory ever threatened you with a 357 Magnum. Anyone objection, Your Honor? Same objection. Anyone after? Don't answer the question. Damn. It has nothing to do with the six mark. Oh my god. Objection, Your Honor. We move for a mistrial. Why couldn't it be a mistrial? He said that in front of the jury. Oh my god. I mean, yeah, she killed all those people. Don't misunderstand, but damn. Did you ever kill anyone before you killed Mr. Mallory and threatened you with a shotgun? How could I? He had the shotgun on me. Is your answer no? No, yes. Did you ever? There may be an objection, so wait until your counsel has an opportunity. Did you ever kill anyone? After you killed Mr. Mallory and threatened you with a shotgun. Objection, Your Honor. Same grounds. Lee, don't, Lee, don't answer the question. They were already toast. She's She was already toast. I mean, probably even before all that coming in, she was, that the, the jury's probably already found her guilty. But damn, and then they bring up these other murders? That just, Bam! She's done. That's what I think. If I mean, if you were on the jury, think about it. They're like, oh, my God, she killed other people. All right, we have a hearing outside the presence of the jury. Maybe reserve argument, Your Honor. Thank you. Now, you knew it was a crime to do prostitute, didn't you? Three million other women do it, too. It's an everyday thing. It goes, it's been going on for centuries. I wasn't doing anything out there wrong or mean to anybody. What they did was mean to me. I was very kind, very nice, had a very ladylike attitude. 
I didn't do anything wrong to him. I didn't even hardly swear. I talked about religion and politics and even talked about trying to save the Lord with some of them. I mean, I talked about Jesus coming, coming soon. And I just, I was very kind. There was no they, reason to attack me. You said what they did was mean to you? What they did to me was violent and mean. Who are you talking, <laughs> who are you talking about? Oh, shit. We're here on Richard Mallory, and I'm talking about Richard Mallory right now. You said they. I'm not going any further in. Oh, my God. This. I would advise you not to go into that. Mm -hmm. They should have known she was going to step in it. And boy, she did. She's done it several times. I hope y'all are paying attention. Damn! And this this prosecution prosecutor that knows it, man. He has pounced on his prey, and it is her. I would ask her to go for it, Judge. She brought it up. Oh my God! <laughs> So you think it's okay to violate the law if a lot of other people do? And what's up with this judge? Damn, he allowed all that crap to be said. I can't imagine that. If Remember all, in the boy in the box case? I know I keep bringing it up because I just covered it. They would have the jury leave the room. They... I mean, and they would be talking about stuff. No, you can't say this. No, you can't say that. And the judge is like, yeah, I mean, he was all over it. The, what in the hell's going on here? I mean, she deserves a fair trial. Yeah, she killed seven men total. But this is for this. That, that's just the point I'm trying to make is how could they have let this happen? Everybody does. Objection, Your Honor, relevance. <laughs> Everybody prostitutes, even even housewives, and ha and so do the men. They're out there. They're the ones with the money putting it on the hook, saying to us prostitutes, you know, here here we are. If they would if they keep their money in their back pockets, their penis in their pants, they wouldn't be feeding prostitution. They're the ones that feed it. That is We're true. We're just out there making our money. That is true. I like it's friendly drug dealing. Objection, Your Honor. There was no Time harm in it. It was like a date. I move for a curative, Your Honor. If I walk in a bar. Yeah, okay. Yes, Your Honor. If I walk in a bar. Thank you. <laughs> if I walk in a bar and I meet a guy, which I never worked at bars, truck stops, CBs, rest areas, street walk, nothing that. I just strictly hitchhiked. Okay prostitution now if i walked in a bar though and there was a guy there that i wanted to go to bed with and we go to bed without money that's just and to me that's just like prostitution adulterous right there too but here let's say we go to bed and he offers me money that's just and we don't hurt each other what's the what's the difference what's the difference we've agreed upon sex with each other only thing is he's giving me a little money to help me and i'm helping him it's just What's the difference? It's like friendship here is alone, even. I mean, it's just plain friendship. There's nothing wrong with it. We're not hurting anybody. We weren't hurting anybody. They're hurting us. So you think you have a right to disregard the law if you disagree with it? Well, I'll tell you, it's the only thing I could do anyway. That's That was my job. I wasn't hurting anybody out there. Well, that's not true, is it? I wasn't hurting anybody out there. I'm the victim, as far as I'm concerned. He had no reason to rape me. He had no reason to do what he did to me. I didn't in provoke him in any way. You didn't hurt anyone out there, is what you said, is no. that correct? Never. He's jabbing. He's trying. They hurt. They hurt me. Who hurt you? I'm that? talking about the earlier oh rapes God. and everything. I didn't have a gun. I couldn't defend myself. If I tried to defend myself, I came close to death so many times. I had to beg for my life. I had to carry a gun for protection. It's the only thing I knew what to do. As far as work. I've done it all my life. And it's the only thing I had I could do. But now the Years are getting further 
into a very high-rise crime. I didn't ask you a question. I'll ask you on just a moment. Man, he was just letting her ramble on. Then he finally stops her. But, yeah. Their attorney, I guess they did warn her, don't ramble. Because she just going on and on and on and on. Further into other incidents, since I'm only here for the Richard Mallory case. Well, I'm, I'm only trying to ask you why you killed six other men. Was no, it all you here? I'm here for that. one trial. I'm here for first degree murder one count in this county. Your Honor, I ask that you uh, instruct the jury. And Lee, I would ask that you not answer the question. Isn't it a fact that you had a pattern of hitchhiking the highways and selecting middle-aged men, men above 35, 37, on up into their 60s? No. I dated guys from anywhere from 28 and up. And in my confession, if it says older, I just, like I say, I wasn't in my right mind where I could stop and rationalize to think what some of the things I wanted to say because my, my mind was... Is, doing a hundred things. My God, hundred. this is brutal. Isn't it true that you generally contacted these men along the major thoroughfares and interstate highways of the state of Florida? Pardon? You generally contacted these men on the interstate highways or the major highways of the state. I hitchhiked and prostitute. That's what I did. Primarily I out of the and prostitute. Sorry. Primarily out of the Daytona Beach area and the Central Florida area. I'd work the whole Florida state. I worked the whole Florida state. Damn. I I ten I ninety five I say five I twenty seven fifty uh, forty one forty four anywhere a whole Florida state. And it was your pattern. Sorry, it was your pattern, was it not, to uh, tell them you were a prostitute so that you could make money? Crap. Sorry. No, because a lot of times I got in the car and they asked me if I was dating. I mean, if I'd want to date. They, they propositioned me many a times. I, a lot of the guys pulled over was strictly for sex. It wasn't like giving a girl a ride to the next exit. It was strictly to pick me up for a date. They knew I was out there for a date. That's, I'm sure every other girl that's hitchhiking out there gets propositioned by a guy. As soon as they get picked up, I bet you they get propositioned by a guy. Because most of the times, I didn't have to ask them. They asked me. Well, you heard uh, uh, Bobby Copas talk about you uh, asking him. He didn't pick me up. I don't even know him. And I think, furthermore, that, that Jackie Giroux knows him, that he called her up about something about a movie, and he's he is bold-facedly lying up here just to get some media attention because I've never seen the man in my life. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Plus, I, w I don't go to truck stops. You, and I don't ride with truckers. You deny that that he went up over to him and asked for a ride saying you need to get back to your children where your sister was? I don't you guess what? My sister, I haven't I haven't called her since for ten minutes, nineteen eighty six. I haven't seen her since nineteen seventy six. I'm not suggesting you told the truth. I'm asking yeah. is that what you told him? No, I didn't see the man. I don't know who he is. I never seen him. I didn't tell him nothing because I've never been in his car. I don't know him. I've never seen him. Plus, I don't think I deal with somebody that bad anyway. Oh, snap. He was too big of a guy, and I don't deal in truck stops. Oh, my God. But you're not the one that hollered after him? He's too big of a guy. I wouldn't trust him being with him. Not the one that, that you hollered after him? That old son of a bitch, I'll kill you too, like I did the others? <laughs> yeah, oh, I did shit. not. I, he never picked me up. I never, especially at truck stop. I don't work truck stops. I don't walk in truck stops. I I think truckers are too dirty. Your testimony is then that he just lied, right? He's lying. Yes, he is. And and you say because he wants to make money in the movie or something? I'll tell you how much I think he's lying. He says I had a purse. The police officers got my purse, the brown one. My gun does not fit that purse. You can check it. You generally carried your uh, gun in a little bag, didn't you? I carried my gun in a tote bag. And he practiced. says a purse. You even practiced fit that purse. You even practiced for that day how fast you can get it out. Kind of a quick draw practice. Oh, you? yes. I doubt that. No. Okay. No, never. Never. Never happened. You ever tell anyone that? 
What do you mean? It never even happened. I never did that in my life. Never when practiced. I get home, I'm too tired. I just set the bag down or in the closet and go to sleep. Never practiced getting out fast and you shoot fast. No, of course not. And I think you made that up royal. You know, Dr. Uh, oh my God. I mean, Objection, Your Honor. Make the approach. No, there's no rule. Oh, my God. No, Dr. No. McMahon? Yes. Your, Your Honor, I believe you ruled on this prior to the, the question. Okay. You know it's against the law to carry a concealed firearm, don't you? Yes. And but I took that risk because I had to use protection. <laughs> Well, and also, if I, if I wasn't a convicted felon, I would have bought a gun and carried it. But since the law won't let us felons, once we get out of prison, protect ourselves with a weapon, they just say, go ahead and get killed. We don't care. We have to just go uh, forget the law and carry it anyway. Because there's a lot of people that have been going convicted felons coming out of prison and they're just as decent people as can be, yet you say we can't carry a weapon. We've got to protect ourselves. There has to be a way to protect ourselves. This is a train wreck. Yeah, I had a feeling this was going to be fireworks. And man, boy, is it. So we can't use our hands. You're even a victim of the law. Objection, Your Honor. You're even a victim of the law. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you just said because of the law. Oh. I, we can't use our hands, is what I'm saying. We have to have a weapon. Were you trying to tell us our, us convicted felons cannot defend ourselves? We have to have a, re, a way to defend ourselves. You think that all convicted felons are allowed to carry guns? Objection, Your Honor. Well, each... Is that what you're saying? Say what you, I didn't hear what you said. So you think that convicted felons should be allowed to carry guns? <laughs> Because a lot of them do turn into the Lord, and a lot of them are very decent people and very straightforward people. So they broke the law. Everybody breaks the law, and I bet you do too. And Matter some, of fact, you drive a car and pollute the earth. And some of them shoot men to death in cold blood, don't they? Objection, Your Honor. Some of them shoot men to death in cold blood, don't they? No, they don't. Damn. I didn't shoot anybody in cold blood. Although I would have been out there decaying. Instead, you've never shot I anyone in cold blood. That's right. Objection. I don't have the heart to shoot somebody in cold blood. You ever shoot a man in the back of the head because he's struggling? In your honor. Okay. I'm not going to answer that question, and it does not bear in this case. Oh my God. So different circumstances to different reasons and circumstances, and there's, I don't need to answer that. Oh, my God. It has nothing to do with Richard Mellon. Would you like to answer it? No, I'm not going to. Lee, I'm instructing you not to answer any right. questions about anything other than Richard Mauer and ask him not to talk about it. Mm -hmm. well, maybe the council would like to get away Objection. Your Honor, do I have permission to talk now that Mr. DeMore has spoken? No, sir. Thank you, Judge Rubio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, I read further than you need to report, do we have someone, Captain Massey, in the hall that can attend to that task? You told this jury that Ms. Jenkins was examining you that Mr. Mallory solicited you for sex? No. When we got to Quail Run, 
He asked me how I know so much about married people. He said, I thought you were single. You told me you had a roommate. And I said, well, I guess it's time for me to be honest and tell you that I'm, I hustle for a living. That's why I know married people, because 90% of my people are married. That I mean. You, you probably did him. He asked me my prices. He said, well, you, you mean sex. And I said, I laughed. And I said, yeah, sex. He said, well, how much do you charge? And it carried on from there. You say that was after you got off the interstate? Yes. <laughs> Didn't you tell uh, Deputy Horseapa that after he offered you the drink and you just got past Orlando and you're getting pretty drunk now and we're continually going down the road and we're getting drunk royal and I asked him if he wanted to help me make some money. But I need some money for rent and everything. He was interested at the time, so we go out and we stop at this place on US-1. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was very incoherent, and when I was saying something, it always was chop, chopped up what was happening because I couldn't remember correctly, plus I was thinking of Tyra confessing. But that still means that, yeah, at Quail Run that happened, not past Orlando. But I'm talking about we've got past Orlando, now we're in Daytona. I'm sure that's how I was thinking. We finally got past Orlando, and now we're on US-1, which we were on US-1 on Quail Run. And then he, we talked about sex. And then you agreed to take your clothes off. Hmm? You took your clothes off. And that was usual for you, wasn't it? I always usually took my clothes off first with any guy. Just because, I mean, that is if we're doing sex for an hour or whatever. You know, it's not with head or anything, just with for an hour. And according to your uh, first statement, Detective Porzeba, that time he gave you some money. He didn't give me any money. We pray, I, I, I told you guys he didn't give, give me any money. No, that's, what you, that's what you said today. He didn't give you any money, right? He didn't give me any money. He never gave me any money. But you told Deputy Orzeva back in January of 91 when he took your tape statement that he gave you the money. No, and then I recorrected myself later in the pages. You should read on. Oh. And I also told him it was a different story. And the handbag deal is not even with Richard Mallory. It's a totally different guy. I was getting mixed up. And plus, he kept asking me about somebody else and somebody else and oh somebody God. else and switching me around so many times. I was confused on who was who I, I was thinking of. Well, here was your statement that oh you were talking God. about Mallory. And it's just below you to where you talk about him proposition, him proposition him on page five. We get to page six at the bottom. And you said, so we go to the woods say okay i want to drink of this stuff and it's about five and i'm just start making and so he gives me the money and i start to disrobe and i yeah. think pardon me and i think if you check on page nine or something it states no he didn't give me any money we, we'll get there mm -hmm. and he said now this guy's getting really kind of he's starting to get a little you know kissing me and stuff anyway he hasn't disrobed himself at all that, yeah. was, that was mr mallory wasn't it? Yes, I was thinking about the very last seconds of what happened when he didn't take off his clothes at that moment when I'm speaking. You're still talking about Mr. Mallory on page seven. He said, okay, so anyway, we're in the front seat. He's hugging and kissing on me and all this shit. And so then he starts, you know, pushing me down. And I said, wait a minute, you know, get cool. You don't have to get, you don't have to get rough, you know. This is let's have fun. This is for fun, you know. And he's telling me, well, baby, you know, I've been waiting for this all night long and stuff like that. And that was in the front seat of the car. That was Mallory, wasn't it? Yeah, but I, I did not express that correctly. I was totally incoherent. And as I, if you read on, I think it says it's a different story. Get there. And then you go on. And, and at this time, you're in the passenger seat and he's in the driver's seat, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, who's in the passenger seat? Who'd you say? You're in the passenger seat. Uh, yes. And he's in the passenger seat. And he's behind the wheel of the car. Mm -hmm. Correct? Answer yes or no, please. Yes. I mean, he's behind the wheel of the car, you said? Yes. Okay. And you say the doors are open. Then you say he's really getting heavy, you know, on me, you know, and stuff. 
And I'm going like, uh, he's getting to where he just wants to just, you know, he unzipped his pants, not take his pants off or anything. Just start having sex and stuff. Is that Mr. Mary talking about? That's the very last end when, when I pulled the cord and everything. He didn't take his clothes off. Nowhere before that do you mention a cord at all. I didn't get a chance to. I told you guys about anal screwing with Mallory in the beginning, and I don't know how the, how it goes and how he questions me. I haven't even been able to read those. You haven't been able to read the transcript? That you're I have read it, but I don't remember what it says. But I just know that I wasn't, I was questioned improperly, where I was totally mixed up. I was totally incoherent. I was in shock, hysteria. I was thinking about Ty. I was freaking about her because they said they, they were going to arrest her. I was con I didn't, I couldn't remember. I was withdrawing from alcohol royal. I had been on a seven week royal binge of drinking, or no, not seven, five weeks. Good Lord. It was showing the reaction of the jury. And their heads, most of you noticed, most of their heads were just down. Oh, man, this is insane. It's not, I guess it's not like I've watched a billion trials all the way through, but this is crazy. We were all binge of drinking since she left me because I was all bummed out about her leaving me. I was totally gone up here. I did not know what I did the best of my ability, but plus, I didn't know what to say. I did. I knew in my mind I didn't want to talk about it because I don't, couldn't remember. I had blackouts. But you told in great. I did the best I could. You told in, I could. Excuse me. Told in great detail uh, of the location, geographically, road-wise, and everything else where you were picked up, didn't you? With who? With Mr. Mallory. When? Well, with times, who? How many times did he pick you? Who are you talking about? Well, let's talk about all of them if you like. No. Who are you talking about? Who, who do I talk this to? My my lawyers or? The, yeah, you told who? in great detail to Mr. Detective Forzetta where Mr. Mallory picked you up. Oh, yeah, I just I four, I say five. The whole conversation, how you two got along, and all that sort. Of no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I said just I-4 and I-75 in Tampa. And you good. said you did a lot of talking and you thought he was a nice guy. On the way from Tampa to Daytona, yes, we talked a lot. And then you, you told him uh, that when he wouldn't unzip his pants, you said to him, and well, why don't you just disrobe or something? You know, I mean, why do you have to have your clothes still on? No, because I didn't know what I was talking about on that one because... I told you I, it was a different story. I confused myself with other guys. And I'm not going to get into other details of the other cases because they're totally different, totally different what happened today. Yeah. And I'm not, I mean, well, it's a rape. What other story are you talking about? Oh I don't know. I'm going to oh tell you, I was incoherent in those confessions. And I don't know what I'm talking about because all I'm talking about in 25 pages is Claire and Tyra, Jolene Moore. You're talking about killing a man. Pardon? You're talking about killing a man in 25 pages. No. The only place you talk about Claire and Tyra Moore generally is at the start no. of these transcripts. I, I said 37 times I stated, Claire, or 17 times I stated Claire and Tyra and 20, I think it's 37 times, something like that, about Confessing only for Tyra. Uh, no. Confessing only for Tyra 17 times. Right. Already. You say this is some other person you were talking about that wouldn't unzip his pants and you got mad? Pardon? You said this is some other person. Objection, Your Honor. It's going in the same area again. Same objection. I'll direct to answer the question. I don't know what her answer is. I'm just getting just as open. confused as one of these confessions were being questioned. I don't understand what you're getting at. All right. Try to listen to the question. You said that this person who wouldn't unzip his pants to have sex with someone else. Who is that? Who is that other person you're talking about? What did you read that over? I don't even know what he's talking about. That's not what she said. It's not what I said in there, I think. Were you asking, asking Ms. Jenkins or were you answering questions? Well, apparently, I just heard, it's too late now, that that's not what it says in there. You're just making up something. No. You said what you said. Oh. 
You think I'm making up something here? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about because I don't know what you're reading. Right. We're Here's what I have to you. What page? Page seven. Okay. On Mallory. On Mallory. Okay. And you said, now like he's getting to where he just wants to, you know, just, you know, unzip his pants, not take his pants off or anything. He starts having sex and stuff. And I said, well, why don't you just disrobe or something, you know? I mean, why do you have your clothes still Okay. On? There, I must be, when I first asked him to disrobe, see, I'm mixed up. I'm mixed up totally. I asked him to disrobe because it, it was getting cold in the car. I said, let's, why don't we get, why don't you undress so we can get, let's get started. It's cold in here. So I know that's what part I'm talking about there. And you said that word just before that, you said he's kissing on you and getting heavy. Is that what you're talking about? Then I see that's what I'm saying. I had this all, I was totally mentally blocked. Totally. I had blackouts completely about that night. What happened exactly? And I'm just choppy as can be. Well, when he so said, what? when you said he's, you're in the front seat, he's kissing, hugging you, talk about the kitchen mouth, right? He, Richard Mallory never even kissed and hugged me. He did that one after he was raping me. So when you told... And if I said he's getting heavy on me, kissing and hugging me, that's rape. Heavy means rape. Although, you, although you've offered to have sex, you're laying there naked on your back. Objection, Your Honor. Oh. You offered to have oh, sex and you're laying there naked on your back and the man paid you and you say it's rape when he's kissing and getting on you? He didn't pay me. And I don't know what you're talking about. He didn't pay me. He's not kissing me because for regular sex. He's, he raped me. This is when he gets heavy. And I, don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. And then he went on to say, then he started getting violent. Then he started getting violent with me and we're fighting a little bit. You know what you said? Well, the way I talk, it's like, well, we were fighting a little bit, and, you know, that's the way I talk. But you expanded upon that today to tell the story of being tied up. And... Well, we did fight a little bit. It wasn't a whole lot of fighting when I grabbed his arms at the very end, and he slapped me in the face. It didn't last five minutes. It only lasted half a minute at the most. Maybe and he's going on and where the fight little bitch said, and I had my purse right there on the passenger floor. And he said, no, it wasn't about the, the purse, it was a blue bag. That's right. He carried a tote bag. Could it have been the brown purse you had with, with uh, Bobby Cobus? I did. Yeah, why don't you check that gun and see if it fits, because if it, I'm telling you it doesn't, and Bobby Cobus doesn't know what he's talking about, because Bobby Cobus never picked me up. All right, well, the blue bag. He said, he had the blue bag, and he had it, had it zipped on the side. And it was unzipped because you want to make sure if anything happened, I could use my gun. Things were starting to happen where I was going to, I think he was going to roll me, take my money back. What are you talking about? Well, probably what I'm trying, probably what I'm thinking is that this guy is going to just rape me, take my money. Kill me, whatever. Dump me off. I don't know. Maybe he thinks I have five, six hundred dollars on me. Take whatever. my money back. You talking about the money that he gave you earlier? He never gave me any money. No way. You said or beat me up or whatever. I, when I say take my money back, I'm sure like that's just a. I was doing okay, Aaron. I wasn't even talking like that. It's just like my expression, you know, you. the way I was expressing myself. Here's your words. It's why you start grabbing this gun. You say, I think he was going to roll me. Take my money back. Beat me up. Let me finish. Uh -huh. I'm going to read your statement. I think he was going to roll me, take my money back, beat me up, or whatever the heck he's going to do. Yeah, and doesn't that say this is a different story at the end? So I jumped out. You say you're not talking about Mallory then? <laughs> I, Mallory? I may be talking a little bit about him, but then I might be talking about somebody else in it. So that's why I said, wait a minute, this is all messed up. Well, who, who, it's like I'm trying to tell you. Well, if this isn't Mr. Mallory, who are you talking about? Objection, Your Honor. Same objection. Leave and answer the question. Please. I couldn't get each. Please don't answer okay. the question. She should say, Lee, Mr. shut Horsey up. Mr. only asked you about Mr. Mallory, did he? Miss he just asked me about Mr. Mallory. Right. Uh -uh. Didn't, didn't Detective Munster ask you about the others? No, her staff questioned me on a couple others. 
But in any event, at this point, you've been talking about Maori according to the questions and the answers you gave that point, correct? Say that over. Yes, you were talking about Maori and you said, so I jumped out of the car with my bag and I grabbed the gun. No, because I didn't never get out of the car. So I'm saying I never had it. Co I was never coherent enough to tell you what actually happened because there was too many blank spots. I had to sit back, put all the pieces together. This person, this person, what happened? I had to get. I was drunk as could be that night. I had to try to remember, like, what did happen exactly, precisely, and everything. I couldn't tell you guys. And if I started to, like I say, every time I messed up and wanted to start over, you guys interrupted me. You talked about Richard Mallory, and then, uh, what was it, 11 or 12 pages later, then you come back to Mallory again after you've gone through a whole oh bunch of jazz God. about some other stuff. Oh, shit. And me confused. Oh, my God. And then you talk about, I mean, the detective Munster or Horsefa or whatever would talk about uh, a sausage truck guy and then ask me about, well, did you find his wallet? Me. And then he was I talking about have, Richard Mallory. Excuse me. So I don't have a question for you based Damn. on what you're doing now. Let me just finish this question. He said, I jumped out of the car with my bag and I grabbed the gun. He said, and I said, get out of the car. And he said, what? What's going on? I said, you son of a bitch. I knew you were going to rape me. And he said, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. And why don't you read the rest? It says this is a different to. story. Is that it? what you said? That's what that one That may be what I said, but it's wrong because it wasn't, I was not coherent. And it, and it is totally about somebody else, which I'm not going to talk about. Well, how about here? And, and later on, you said, oh, no, 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 that wasn't it. Is that where you corrected? I don't think Your Honor, I'm going to object unless he's willing to give her a copy of the transcript. That's impossible. Yes. That's serious. And I put it in Oh, my God. This is a disaster for her. <laughs> Page counselor. Okay. Page seven. Okay. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. He said, get out of the car, that you speaking. He said, what? What's going on? And I said, you son of a bitch, I knew you were going to rape me. He said, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. And I said, oh, yes, you were. You know you're going to try to rape me, man. So anyway, I told him, step away from the car. And then he said, oh, no, 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 I didn't. All this is another thing, okay? I know what happened, okay? I took... I got, I jumped out of the car. Now we say, I jumped out of the car, you're talking about Mallory wait, again, right? Wait. Yes. I got page seven, and I don't see anything you're talking about here. I'm sorry, page eight now, starting on page seven. Okay. The hell? You said, oh, no, 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 I didn't, all this is another thing, okay? I know what happened, okay? I took, I got, I jumped out of the car. That was Mallory you're talking about. No, because I told you, yeah, he was starting to get physically do stuff to me. Ah, oh, this is a different story. God, see it so long ago. And that's why I'm totally incoherent. I can't remember everything. You guys are asking me questions about these incidences that happened when my mind's focused on Tyra I only came here to confess I don't know what I'm doing here talking to you guys about the other things and and I'm like well should I even answer these questions I really don't want to and I'm also confused anyway when I start talking about them that I get mixed up with different people because you guys keep asking me you know okay it's all right take your time and then you say yeah okay I jumped out of the car I pulled my gun out when he started to do physically do shit to me, with me. And now, what type of, type of gun do you have? Now, you don't even let me go on. I mean, they weren't letting me go on. and Or nothing, to recorrect myself or anything. They kept... Now he just asked me about... Now, for the next 11 pages, he's talking about all different guys. White pickup truck, and I say, what white pickup truck? I don't recall a white pickup truck. Lee, I'm going to instruct you not to attack. 
any other Damn, blame. charges oh, God. and cases pending. Oh, my God. Went on to say that uh, on that same page that this was a nine shot, 22 caliber pistol, correct? Mm -hmm. And that uh, it was fully loaded. Uh, yeah, I usually carry it loaded. Does this appear to be that pistol? Mm -hmm. Exhibit 20. Mm -hmm. Have your pistol? Mm. Yes. Yes. Have the pistol you killed Richard Mallory with? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pistol that you threw away under Rose Bay Bridge in Volusia County, correct? Yes. Nearly a year later, right? Pardon? Nearly a year later, she threw it away. Mm-hmm. Is it advice to Tyra Jolene Moore? Shit. Now you say Tyra Moore advised you to throw the pistol away? Yes, she did. When did she do that? The very last stages of our relationship. I told her I was going to go ahead and quit hustling, and she said, just throw the gun away in the river or something. At that time, did she know that she had killed seven in with it? Your Honor, objection, same grounds, we don't Holy answer that shit. question. Holy shit! At that time, did she that? know you had killed Richard Mallory with it? Yes, because she knew it was South I told her 14 days later about the bruises and everything, and I told her what happened. She knows it's self-defense. Mm -hmm. Was there any other reason that you know of that she told you to throw it away? No, because she used to tell me, do you got your gun? Do you have your rubbers? Make sure you don't, make sure that you uh, clean the vehicles out very good. If you ever run into an incident like that again, don't let anybody hurt you, honey. And you've been violently raped and I'll never want to see anybody do anything like that to you again. Did you, did you ever tell her about any violent rapes after Mallory? Or attempted Objection, to Your Honor, same grounds. Lee, don't answer the question. The cat's already out of that bag. It ain't getting put back in. Now, you'd only had that gun for maybe a couple of months at the most, or maybe as short as a couple of days, right? I've had it for at least ever since Rutland, which I don't know. You'd have to, I have to, somebody has to check up and see. When I lived in Rutland, before Ocean Camp Village Campground, that's when I got the gun. Was there a record where you purchased it? When I was in your honor, that's what we're I'm not going to answer it. I think we need to. But he's not going to answer it. We don't need to go anywhere. Respect him, your Yes. Well, on page nine of <clears> your <throat> transcript of your deposition, you first say that I don't, and they asked you uh, how long you'd had it, months, years. You said, I don't know, man. It might have been about maybe a couple of months ago. And then Detective Forzaker said, okay, you had the gun quite a long time. He again said, no, only a couple of months before. And he said, right. And then you said, I think, I think I, and he responded, that's no problem. Then you said, I might have got the gun just then. I don't, I can't remember like like two days before or something well like i said i what are you supposed to do stop the clock let me heal my mind from my hysteria and everything else i'm not going to answer any questions coherently i was incoherent i was hysteria i was totally in pluto so whatever i said didn't make sense basically and i've read the one time the trans this thing this confession, and it shows nothing but hysterical, hysteria, and incoherence. There is no coherence whatsoever, hardly at all, in this confession. It shows I am freaking out. And so any questions that I answer are not going to be coherent. Or, uh, well, if you even want to say honest, because I can't be honest, because I can't say the truth of what's happening, because I'm incoherent, I don't know. And, it, and I'm telling you right now, I got the gun in Rutland, so take it from there. That's all I can do. Well, then on that same page, 
The discussion concerning Mr. Mallory resumes at page nine. And the tech board's up and said, okay, so you're back there, you jump out of the car. Your response was, I jumped out of the car because he was physically starting to abuse me. Page nine, next to the bottom. Okay. And I remember now, he didn't give me any money. This was another guy, this guy. He said, he said, well, I'll give you no. I said, well, I always take my money first. See how the merchandise is. And then the question, this was Mr. Mowry told you? Your answer, yes. Mm -hmm. I do recall him saying something about merchandise, but I, that was. Okay. There's no question you jumped out of the car, though, with Mr. Mowry before you shot him. No, I jumped out of the car after he was shot three times, and I ran to the driver's side, opened the door, was looking at him. He was starting to come out at me, and I just said, "Don't come any, don't come any closer to me, or something like that. I'm going to have to keep shooting you if you do." And he just kept on coming, and so I shot him. All right. So you shot him three times from, according to you, inside the car, right? I shot him three times. Yeah. And that's not an automatic pistol. You have to pull the trigger and, and cock. No, it shoots real easy. Really? It's got like a hairpin trigger to it. And after you shot him three times, where did those bullets hit him? Well, all I know is that he was reaching his arm, and since I've seen from you guys, one must have went under there. And I don't know where the others that They went in the front area. I and don't you, know where. Then you got out past your door and ran all the way around the car. Correct? Yeah. According to this story. Mm hmm Then you opened the door. Correct? Mm hmm And then you shot him again. He was coming out of the car, and I do even state it in here now if you want to I say something about he's uh, getting out of the car somewhere in here. I'm 55 or something. 53? Yeah, it's 53. Okay. And you, and you oh. said that this discussion about money, you hadn't asked for money, but you thought he was a pretty nice guy. Is that right? Say that again. You hadn't asked for the money in advance, but you thought he was a pretty nice guy. Is that right? Yeah, because I had traveled with him from Tampa to Daytona, and he hasn't tried anything on me yet. So. All right, and then you go on. all the worldly chances to when we stop to take leaks and everything. All right, and, and Deputy Jose was just listening now. He said, you talked about the money, he said, this, he said, this is what Mallory told you, and he said, yes. And then he said, okay, waiting for your next explanation. And your answer was, so I said, well, since I've been talking to you all night long, I think you seem like a pretty nice guy, you know, so okay, let's go, let's, let's go have fun. So I started to lay down, and he's going to, you know, unzip his pants. Objection, Your Honor. Is there a question, or is he just reading her statement to her? Did you say that? <clears throat> is that what happened? I'm telling you that's not what happened. I'm telling you I'm incoherent again in this statement, not expressing myself it, right what really it, happened. And I go into other details with other people in here where I'm totally talking about one person, another person, even talk about Richard Mallory in there. I advise you not to talk okay. about any other oh. Damn. Well, you know you're talking about Mr. Mallory here, though, weren't you? If, apparently, it says this is what Mr. Mallory told you. I say yes, but then you go okay, and then I go carry on. But believe me, I'm not, I'm not talking. I'm not getting. I'm incoherent. I'm not saying it right. Well, this doesn't sound incoherent. I'm thinking of listen, another incident listen with him. To, listen to this sentence. You said, why don't you take your clothes off? My God, you know, I said, well, it hurt to do that. Yeah, that and, sounds pretty incoherent to me. And then he got pissed, called me. He said, fuck you, baby. I'm going to screw you right here and now or something like that. Is that Mr. Mallory? I didn't remember the night what happened. I did the best I could to get close on that particular thought in mind. And he, he went on to say that you were in the woods, the door. Pardon, would you say? 
You went on to acknowledge that you were in the woods, the doors of the automobile were open. They were not open. But you said they were. Again, I, I'm going to have to go over this with you. How many no, no. times over? Because I'm, I'm not just asking there. you to answer. Did you say they were at that time? I said they were at that time, I guess. Okay. I'm, All right. I'm, Good. Don't We've heard your explanation. All you have to do is answer yes or no yes. to this part of the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the question about money. Right after the word okay, you said, I remember that, referring to the woods and the doors open. You said, and I said, no, no. You're not going to just fuck me. You got to pay. Is that what you said to Mr. Mallory? Like I said, is that what you said to Miss Mallory? Yes or no? If that's what's in the confessions, I guess I can't say that it isn't. It's is that there. You, is that what you said to him? No, I'm saying no. I didn't say it right. And you say it's because you were totally incoherent and didn't understand what you're doing. Yes, I was totally. And if you would have saw me 45 minutes before I even talked to him the confessions, and and when I just got off that phone, you would have seen me in a total hysterical state. Well, I and, couldn't stop. And, laughing and crying and everything else that was and, going on. And then you continued to say, you mm -hmm. said, and he said, oh, bullshit. And that's when I got pissed. Isn't that what you said? If that's what you said, it's not what it says. Well, first, it's not you're, you're correct. Thank you, counsel. And he said, oh, bullshit. And that's when he got pissed. Is that right? If that's what it says in there, but I'm telling you, I. Like I said before, I would talk about one person and then it would be another person I'm talking about, then another person, and it would be Mallory I'm talking about. With mixing up even, I had it so mixed up in here. I, there's just, they were, as I, Tyra asked me to race, get drunk and erase these incidents, keep erasing, erasing, erasing. That's just what I did. I erased. And when they, they started questioning me on these, I was totally lost because i couldn't remember i had blank spots for them. well how about today you told the story about alcohol and anal rape and, and you had all sorts of, of details mm -hmm. that you never ever ever revealed to police right never ever what revealed to the police and i can talk about everyone now today but Would i'm like not to going that? to no objection your honor ray again i would advise you not to talk about any other incident other than mal The damage is done. That Good ship is sailed. Thank you, Your Honor. You, you say, well, I'm coming back to recollection. Damn. Okay, so then we started fighting and everything else, and I jumped out. He grabbed my bag, and I grabbed my bag, and he arm busted. And I got the bag again, and I pulled it out of his hand. And that's when I grabbed the pistol. That's what happened. What? No, that is a totally different guy. And I just shot him in the front seat. Got Mr. Mauer in the front seat. Didn't he? But not that way. That's not what happened. I told you it was a different guy, and it even states it was a different guy. That's the same phrase that I say. It's a different story. Would you tell us who you're talking about here? Your Honor, no, objection. I can't. I'm saying objection. This is horrible. We don't want to say that... In fact, you showed where the bullet struck on the videotape, didn't you? Pardon? You stood up and showed where the bullet struck on the videotape on the right side, didn't you? I tried to. I don't remember how I was. I matter of fact, yesterday I didn't notice what I was doing. And that that was talking about Mr. Mallory, wasn't it? I guess. Then you go on to page ten. You say, okay. Then he proceeded to get out of the car. So he started to get out of the car, and I ran around in front of the car, and he started coming towards me. Your Honor, I'm going to have to object. Again, the uh, prosecutor is reading her statement. He's not asking any questions. If he has questions, I'm sure she'll answer, as long as it pertains to Mallory. Yes, yeah. is, is that what you told uh, Deputy Ortega? If it's written there, I guess that's what it says. I can't take the typing and erase it. And change it over. I'm changing. I'm trying to tell you the truth today. What actually happened? This this is incoherent mishmash jazz.
And then on page 53. Again, Your Honor, same objection. He's reading the transcript. They probably should have had him cut up the uh, the transcripts that only referred to this trial. This is a disaster. I, she's clearly mental, and she probably was out of her mind when she gave that statement. I mean, she's been drinking every day for a decade. Good Lord. I mean, she's guilty. Don't misunderstand. I know she's guilty, but damn, she still deserves a fair trial, and this is insane. Well, go back. Let's go back to 21. You certainly are willing to admit he's behind the steering wheel when you shot him, aren't you? I was I was lying down in the passenger seat, lying down across the whole darn uh, front seat. Actually, I mean, she would have probably been obviously. She, I, I could probably bet, even without them even mentioning the other cases. She would have been found guilty. That juror, y'all been seeing the looks on their faces. They can't even look. They're looking down. I mean, they, they're uncomfortable. That little old lady's doing this. It's insane that we're getting to see the jury. But even if they, they didn't bring that up, she would have probably been found guilty. But still, they sh this is unbelievable that th this judge has let these that prosecutor bring in other uh, cases against her. It's insane. He was behind the wheel. He was up on his knee, one leg down, one leg, one knee up on the, on the, uh, seat. And you were lying down? I was, my legs were up, like, he was having me once. Spread my legs. Well, if that's true, would the bullet have gone in and come out up high? Objection, Your Honor. Can you explain why the bullet with which you shot him inside didn't enter Objection. low and go upward and high if you were lying on seat shooting up? Objection, Your Honor. I thought he. I thought that the, whatever he was, so he was so decomposed you couldn't tell. How can you say that? The pathologist said. Um, I don't. I couldn't tell you. All I know is I shot from the seat down, lying down. You shot him immediately. You didn't give him a chance to say anything, did you? Am I supposed to stop the clock and say, rationalize with this guy who's about, who wanted to kill me? Who said him, he was going to kill me? You didn't give him a chance to say anything when you shot him the first time, did you? No, I didn't. What about the second time? No. Nope. What about the third time? No. Nope. What about the last time when you shot him on the ground? I didn't shoot him on the ground. I shoot him, I shot, shot him as he was coming out of the car. And I shot him. I told him to stop, don't move no more, don't come toward me anymore, and just stay there. He didn't listen, he was coming out of the car, and I shot him again because I didn't know what the Dickens he was doing, I didn't know if he had another gun under the seat, I didn't know if he was going to reach for another weapon, I don't know what he had. And there wasn't, he didn't have a weapon in that car, did he? How do I know? Did he have a weapon? No, he didn't. But how did I know? And then know? after you shot him, you ran around in front of the car and came around to his side and shot him some more. Objection, Your Honor. Ask and answer I several times. Is. And you said he kind of crawled out of the car and shut the door, right? He didn't shut the door. I shut the door afterward. And then you went, uh, drove to Quail or Quail Run. Mm -hmm. Where about did Quail Run did you go? Just as soon as you get off the road, just right there, there's some place you can park. Why did you go there? Because I was totally nude and I had to get my clothes on. And I also was shook up. I was crying vehemently and I had to get my head back together. I and of course, I can't ride around nude. I can't drive Maybe. How do you know where Quarry Run was? Because I live out there. You do that neighborhood, did you? I, 
I know all Daytona, all of Daytona. I've been here since 1974. And I lived in Bunnell. And then you went and got some gas, right? Very little. You went back to the hotel and you told Ty you borrowed the car. Right? I told Tyra when I got into the motel room and saw the furniture totally destroyed and everything else, I immediately, I was going to just not even tell her the car was out there. You know, I was just going to take a shower and then go back, back out and hurry up and get rid of it. But when I said that, I said, oh man, I got to get, we got to get out of here. The manager's going to call the cops or whatever. So I told her, I said, I just borrowed a car and a guy's in a motel waiting. I got to bring it back in two hours. You went in Mr. Mallory's pockets and took his uh, goods and his money, didn't you? No, I didn't. I went and got his keys. His his wallet wasn't even on his possession. It was underneath the seat of the car. You turned his pockets inside out. Just to get the keys out of the out of his pocket. And uh, I'm sure it pulled its it just came with the keys. His pocket opened with he had some pretty tight jeans on. Yeah, they were still zipped up. Yes, they were. Had his pants on. Yes, but he was about to unzip them. That's what made you mad. He wouldn't take them off. No. Nope. That's not what happened. Then he went went on to uh, have the car washed to get rid of any evidence that might be on him. Right. Pardon? He had his car washed to get rid of any evidence that might be on him. I had the car washed to make sure my fingerprints weren't in that car because I was scared out of my mind about what I had just done and I and that I had to you know, leave his vehicle somewhere. Um, and you pawned his radar detector and uh, cross tooth and yes, I did that for food as I laid low. Hmm. And what was it? Only thirty dollars. And it's thirty dollars. Hmm. What did what did you get away money from him? Was for food. Food. How much money did you get get from him? There was like thirty-eight or forty-two, forty-eight dollars, something like that. It wasn't it was less than fifty. Now I can I remember a twenty and a ten and some change, like five one or something. Fives and ones and when you shot Mr. Mallory, you intended to kill it, didn't you? I didn't want to. I had no choice. You intended to kill him, didn't you? I had no choice. I didn't. I couldn't stop the clock and say, "Well, let's see where I can shoot him at, so he'll stay alive." I, there. I had to immediately shoot. He was going to kill me. He was in. He was going to beat the living daylight okay. out and choke me to death. you Whatever it. he was going to do. This You've explained that several times. I just answer the question. You intended to kill him, didn't you? I say no. And here's your answer. No. You shot him in the chest? I had no choice. Wherever I shot him and it killed him, I had no choice. I didn't have a chance to stop the clock and say, shoot him in the leg, shoot him in the foot, shoot him in the arm. And I'm not the greatest aimer. I did whatever I had to do at the quickest moment and out just fast as possible. It was spontaneous reaction. Shot him once in the side, right? Right. Now I'm going to have to object. Ask and answer several times. Shot him in the neck. Right. I didn't know he got shot in the neck at all. I didn't hear that he got shot in the neck. Well, did you see a shirt with a bullet hole in the collar? Yeah, and that <laughs> objection, Your Honor. Okay. She's already testified she can't remember where he was shot. <laughs> Well, did you tell uh, Deputy Horzeff on page 25, and the question was, uh, when you decided to pull that gun, that person was going to die. I mean, you weren't just going to shoot him. You remember that question? Yes. You remember your answer? Oh, I was definitely going to shoot him and let him die. Thank you, what, Counselor. Isn't that what you said, page 58? Yes, and I'm referring to a certain situation, and I when that's the thing. There's certain situations here. Where there's a number, and uh, every incident was a different situation of of the violence that was involved. 
and the fear and everything else in certain situations. So when I talk to about when that, I'm getting questioned, those questions, I'm referring of certain situation to certain people and everything else to see if you can't nothing can be level to one person. You can tell it all if you want. Objection, Your Honor. This is, it's a mad thing. Hey, I'm going to continue to do this. She keeps acting like we're stopping her. Stop her. Page 58, again, a little ahead of where you said, I was definitely going to shoot him and let him die. These questions are asked by <laughs> Deputy Ward Zeppelin. He said, uh, <clears throat> Did you give an electric razor to the gentleman who owned the little restaurant where you stayed at? Your answer was, yes, I did. And the question was, whose razor did that belong to? And he said, I think that was Mallory's. Richard Mallory's razor? Uh-huh. Did you give that gentleman or his wife anything else to give? Uh-huh. I, uh, I just wanted to get rid of the razor because... Uh, Objection, Your Honor. Is this a question or is he going to read her transcript? Yeah. Were those the questions and answers that you gave? Questions asked and answers that you gave? Yes, and amazingly, that some of the short questions, I mean, some of the small. Don't, don't I'll, you can explain later. Were those the questions asked and your answer? Yes, sir. Yes, and answer. And I'd ask you to look. It exhibit 122. <clears throat> I ask you, that doesn't appear to be Mr. Mowers, right? Okay. Your Honor, I don't really have to object to the prosecutor ripping open the evidence and throwing it down in front of my client. Thank you. That is razor. I don't know. I was not shown the razor when they asked me, so therefore I do not know if this is his razor or not. I don't know who it belongs to. But Part it did have one. Pardon me, but objection. Property, isn't it? Objection. Hard to keep up with that much property that you take, isn't it? They objection. Are saying, it was dramatic. I ask that you instruct the jury to disregard. You recall where you asked me to explain the items. Your answer was, I just wanted to get rid of the razor because I didn't, you know, what do I need it for? And I, and I just, you know, are nice to me and shit. So I decided to give them the razor for Christmas or something. Your Honor, objection again. Is there a question? Yes, I'm, I'm about there, Your Honor. That was referring to Mr. Mallory's razor, right? Like I say, I don't know if that's this razor or not. And I don't need to lie. He had a razor, but I don't know what, who, where. I don't know what it looks like. I know that Tyra wanted me to keep a razor for her to shave her legs with, and that is the only reason I kept the darn thing in the first place. I what? didn't care about Oh, crap, it's buffering. It. I it just could have threw it with everything else. My away. question to you was this. You were talking about Mr. Mallory's razor at that time. Yes. Okay. And then, then the next question to you, after you're talking about Mr. Mallory's razor, you said, so you, after all these... Objection, Your Honor. I'll move past that question. The next, next question after that was that... But when you decide to pull that gun, that person's going to die. I mean, you were just going to shoot him. And your answer, oh, I was just going to approach the bench. This, the uh, approach the bench, right? And I haven't been able to sit and rationalize out to, to think it out and realize what I'm saying because I'm too under too much stress, hysteria, everything else. I don't answer these any of this jazz. Correctly. So if I did something like that, it sounds kind of rough. I didn't mean it that way. I just was too understressed and tense. I didn't know how to explain myself. You also explained to uh, Deputy Horzappa, did you not? Did you have to kill because 
If you do, kill any of the identified and arrested. Say that over again. Yeah, you had to kill him because if you didn't kill Objection, him, you Your Honor, are you referring to Mallory? Oh my God. <laughs> She should have just objected and not said anything else. Oh my God. This is horrible. Page seven, take one. Page what? One? Seven, take one. Page seven, take one. Oh my God. She should have never took the stand. Your Honor, I reject this is not related to Mallory. Oh, but it is. Do we approach the thing? No, we never I'm going to move for a mistrial, Your Honor. Damn. Damn. Uh, Page seven. So I shot him, and then I thought to myself, well, hell, might as well just keep shooting him, but I got to kill the guy. Objection, Your Honor, it's the only same grounds, and I moved for a mistrial. This is not. Why is she saying this is not this case? You oh, my God. Did you tell that the I told him, if I say it like that and hear like that, wrong. But this is how I feel. I felt like what he did to me was unnecessary. And so therefore, when I took his property for food, I figured, well, like, I don't know. It was like, how soon we have to pay? What is it? No, she remembers it. She remembers Like he owed me for what he did to Jack I don't know. This is insane. <laughs> so when I. Did you tell uh, Deputy Orzapa maybe it was self defense, maybe it was stupid? Page, Councilor. Yeah. Page 2, page 29. Did I tell him what? Maybe it was self defense, maybe it was stupid. <laughs> Do I recall reading that point? Yes, sir. May we approach the bench? Oh, my God. I recall. Same objection, Your Honor. Not, not focused. And again, we would move for a uh, mistrial. It's generic. Objection. Thank you. I'll answer that. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, may we... Um, Sometimes it's happening to have legal argument on, on some of the Oh my God. I've never seen nothing like this. Tell uh, Deputy he didn't know why he killed Richard Mallory. I couldn't hear you. Tell please. Deputy Horsaka, he didn't know why he killed Richard Mallory. Page, please. What page? Page four. On the first one or the yeah. second? First.
But what I did, I don't understand why I did it. Again, Your Honor, I would object. I would direct you not to answer the question, no, Lee. I'm not going to. How was he letting him flip through her deposition on pages that that was comments on a different case? I'm not an attorney, but it I didn't think they could do that. It's just blowing my mind. This wasn't <clears throat> also. Did you say that you knew you had to because you knew he left some witness out? Objection, Your Honor. Find out who you were. Get caught. I Objection, Your Honor. Same grounds. They had instructed. May we just ask the witness, Your Honor, if you can now? No, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Questions are here. Isn't one of the reasons you killed Mr. Mallory because you didn't want him to tell on you after you shot him? What? Oh, you were in the dilemma. You already when shot him. the question that you asked before, he, when I had to do what I had to do, if he would have been alive, he would have probably told the cops, I tried to rob him and kill him, which is not true, because I am a prostitute. Nobody was going to believe that I'm a prostitute, and that he raped me, and that he tried to ch strangle me and kill me, and that he was going to probably do all kinds of other things to me throughout the whole day, the next morning, and whatever, how long he was going to keep me. I don't believe anybody would have believed me because we've got prostitutes out there that are being killed every day and nobody cares about it. And we've got women being raped every day and it doesn't seem they're prostitutes, that nobody cares about it. And I have witnessed it with my own eyes reading the newspapers numerous, numerous, numerous times. So I believe that nobody would have believed me. So when I made that statement, I meant referring to the fact that nobody would have believed that I was raped and that I had to defend myself. They would have said, you're a prostitute. We don't care. Besides, you had to go and kill him. I didn't. When he was dying, I'm talking about other I'm talking about different situations. I'm telling you, I'm not talking about Richard Mallory there. No. Mm -mm. You I'm did. talking about a totally different situation. Well, what had you decided when you and shot I'm not going to talk about it. As you went around, what had you decided when you shot him the last time square in the chest? When he was coming out of the vehicle, that's where it was very obvious to shoot at. You say that here you are, a woman who is ravaged and naked, right? Right? Yes, I was naked. Four marks around her neck where she'd been strangled. Right? Right? Yes. Bleeding from the anus where you've been raped. Right? Yes. Alcohol and visine bottles where this torture took place. Right? There's alcohol drinks on, in, on the hub. But the alcohol was squirted up your anus. Oh, yes. A cord with which you had been tied to the wheel and held by the neck. Mm -hmm. yes. And no one would believe that you had been assaulted? The, the marks on my neck were very small. They looked like hickeys. Well, how about your anus? That it was bleeding, you was ripped. It's the way I was... I was I was too. Am I supposed to walk out there nude with a gun in my hand down the road? Oh my gosh! What a disaster! 
I had never seen that before. But that's... It was good. Not good for her. I think it was unfair for her. Uh, him, The judge letting him do that. And then knowing that she stumbled all up in it. Every time. I mean, her attorneys kept saying, uh, don't answer that question. Basically, she's saying, shut up. And then she said, oh, this is for other other cases. I mean, the damage is done. Dang. It is just unbelievable. But anyway, I... It was two hours long. I enjoyed it. If anybody made it to the end, kudos to you because it was it was riveting. It really was. And seeing the jury. Oh man. I don't know. I mean, I wish I knew more about law because she how could they how could that judge let that in there like that? Reading from the transcripts to, to, where they were giving her, a, she gave a deposition on, uh, they were asking her about all these crimes. And he allowed it. That, I remember when the defense attorney, well, um, he did, had some stipulations at the beginning. And the judge is like, well, if it airs, I'll rule on it. And he's saying, well, no, we don't even want it to air. But the judge gave way for it, it right at the gate. I was like, holy shit. This is insane. Yes, she's guilty. She's crazy. I mean, and I've seen, a, I haven't watched the whole thing, though, of the clip of, I saw a clip of her uh, given the deposition she was smoking and, and she, she had more weight on her. She looked heavier. And she's moving around a lot, and, you know, she's animated. And then one of the detectives gives him his, her a jacket. I mean, yeah, she's crazy. She's a psychopath. Again, I'll reiterate, I don't think they should have executed her. I, I think she should have been put in a mental institution. And uh, they just uh, keep evaluating her. And she should never be let out, even though she going to be put in a, an institution and then she can serve the rest of her time in jail or whatever if they ever thought she was stable but I, you know I don't know but anyway I thoroughly enjoyed that actually it was it was quite riveting but if you made it to the end thank you for hanging out with me I don't know how I, I know I need to do the the documentary type of thing and you know, everybody's done it under the sun, but I'm just fascinated about it and pick and choose the little clips I would like to use for it, the things that stand out to me. So I'm going to be working on that. And thank you and peace out.